Hey everyone, I'm Prez. Welcome back to episode two of the Netherlands. This is the second episode of my first European project I've ever worked on on this channel, and I, I, I cannot thank you all enough for all of the amazing feedback given in the comments of the last episode. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but yeah, this episode we're going to be building a market in the center of the city. So let's get started. Okay, so we, yeah, elephant in the room. Wow, the feedback in the last video was good. I I, I can't believe the feedback that uh, you've all given me there. I think we're at like 450 comments and 30,000 views right now. The video has been out for four days. That is uh, a really insane response for my channel. I In this time, I'd usually get maybe 10,000 views, uh, 200 comments, which is already completely bonkers, and it's a lot to get through. But this was on another level, and... It is, it's doing better than any video I've ever uploaded uh, in, the, in this time frame, maybe except one of the videos that I uploaded right when YouTube featured me as a, uh, a creator on the rise on the trending page, which is pretty hard to beat. So I, I mean, it's saying a lot that that video is doing so well, but it's not just the, the numbers on that video, it's the quality of the response. I cannot thank you all enough, as I mentioned, for the amazing, amazing feedback you gave me on that video. Not only on that video in the comments, but in emails. A couple of you emailed me, gave me paragraphs on what you uh, thought I should do with the city, uh, some things to keep in mind, some things that might be unrealistic. So we'll try to go over a couple of those things in this video. Uh, but, I mean, starting off, like, I, yeah, just, I, once again, just thank you all so much. I, I really hope that I can do this amazing country justice in this series. I hope I don't um, maybe like perpetuate cliches or anything of that sort. I want to do my best to uh, give a good representation of the Netherlands. I'm not from the Netherlands. I've never been there. Um, I've only been to Europe once and I'm, I'm going to do my best here, but you know, the, the success of this series still will hinge on feedback from all of you and i'll try to do my best to read as much of it as i can obviously there was more on the last episode than i'll normally get um so it was it was a lot like 400 comments is no easy feat to because i read every single comment i i will continue to read every single comment as long as humanly possible um especially considering the quality like i'm not sifting through junk but one thing to keep in mind is i am moving in a week and i'm gonna be like living on my i mean i'm gonna have roommates but just living on my own quote unquote for uh for the first time so that'll be a little bit of getting used to there um so i'm not gonna be working on this city 24 7 i'm not gonna be able to research you know for hours and hours a week but i am going to try to read your comments um build you know suggestions that you you give like definitely if you have like some sort of interesting bike intersection or you know, build you want me to make in in this city send it in the comments because i've got a whole notion file with all of those suggestions and I, or at least the ones that I might want to build. Uh, ideally it has Google Earth uh, as well, that would be great. Yeah, leave your suggestions for builds in the comments. It was also pretty surprising to see the amount of people um, who were just from Kronigan in, in the comments of the last video, which apparently I'm sort of pronouncing that correctly. Uh, although. I still feel like an idiot, but um, most people said I was pronouncing that correctly, so that's good. But th there were so many commenters from Groningen, and just generally from the Netherlands. I looked at the, the statistics for that video, and the percentage of people from the Netherlands who were viewing that video is like almost as high as the, Uni the, Uni yeah, the United States. I can't speak, which is, which is totally unheard of for my videos. Like, I I've never had anything close to that. The Netherlands has always been a larger country, but still only a couple of percent. Uh, this is pretty crazy, and it, it's really cool to have such a large Dutch following um, viewing 
the series and it'll, it'll be awesome because this is just going to be a collaborative effort i can't do this alone i can I, i'm really not capable of building a actually realistic dutch city alone uh, i'm doing this series as a challenge to myself and also just a way to reach out uh, into the community and see how much um, collaboration can occur. I've got a bunch of different ideas for how, how that can happen. Okay, quickly, before we move on to the, the market build, I wanted to mention the name of the city uh, I announced last episode is Fietstad, which means Bike City, which uh, there's actually a Dutch cycling organization that hands out an award every year uh, to the Fietstad of the year, which is the, the best cycling city of the year. But like, based on that, it, it's sort of an unrealistic name for a, an old city like this, especially. But the idea is that the city was renamed in the past couple of decades by student activists, because just like Groningen, um, our city here is going to have a huge student population. Uh, and uh, the idea is that they renamed it because it used to be named after some completely despicable guy. Um, and that's the, that's the idea. And that's just my justification. You know, there are a bunch of different ways you could take that storyline, but uh, I think it's fine. I, I think it's just, it's a fun name for a virtual city. And there's a chance I'll change it in the future, maybe, if I, if I get really annoyed with it, maybe I will. But it's fun, we're gonna keep it like that for now. But anyway, we've built our first block here, we've been placing a bunch of bikes all over the place. I'll talk about how I'm doing that a little bit later in the episode, but for now, let's, let's move on and build the market. are enjoying the video rating would be highly appreciated it'll also help you find the videos because if, if you like the video then youtube will be like oh wow okay you liked that video we'll show you more more videos like that uh so it helps you too it helps both of us anyway moving on we're working on the market it's inspired by the market in the center of Groningen, uh, which is the city we're basing uh, this, this city off of. From what I can tell, the, uh, the the market that we're basing this off of is called the Vismarkt, which is the which directly translates to fish market. Uh, I probably butchered both the translation there uh, and the pronunciation. You guys are just gonna have to bear with me. Let me know in the comments. Maybe I got them both right. Let me know. But uh, the Vismarkt in the core of Groningen is really cool. It's, it's in this sort of open space um, around a bunch of buildings. The, 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 there's just this open space where the market fills up with vendors. I'm not sure how often, but it, it looks like a pretty cool vibe, and I'm trying to replicate that here. I'm also adding my own twist on it. We've got this sort of market hall, the indoor market hall, um, on one end of this, so that maybe at certain times of the year when it needs to be inside, it can be held inside or uh, year-round there like are maybe other vendors inside. Who knows, but I wanted to add that there because it was a pretty cool building. I didn't want to just ignore. We'll also be adding a old church at one one end of this. Uh, I'm going to make sure, because I got a suggestion in the comments to make sure that I'm using like the a proper uh, church for this that's actually realistic, um, which, which is a good suggestion because I know using, like there's certain cathedrals in the workshop that are like they, they are not realistic for like the north of europe which is predominantly Pro protestant you're not going to see huge um catholic cathedrals um up there but there are probably some some good options in the workshop uh, i've placed one down i think i end up deleting it before the end of the episode just it's there um you'll see it a little bit later as a reference just ignore it for now but if you have some suggestions for what that building might be let me know in the comments that would be great uh, i've been looking around for a while i found some pretty good options but it would be great to hear from you guys but yeah anyway i've basically covered the the market area here um with invisible pedestrian paths and then park people generators so people actually walk there uh, which is pretty cool and i use the jez market props except they are in pre-made buildings um somebody pre-made them into buildings I don't, I don't think it was jez himself but uh the they're really cool they're, they're super cool i use those in columbia city for the the um the pike place well it's not it, it's a public market it is not in any way close to pike place but um it was in our public market there we used those 
and it took way longer than it took here. I was just able to place down these as building versions and just place them everywhere and make rows of them and they, they just look so good. So right now we're placing the buildings on the other side of the market because um, we've already placed uh, one block of buildings and fully detailed it. I'm doing that again over here, although I don't fully detail everything. I just place all of the buildings uh, here. I will place, you know, bikes and all those small details uh, in the future. Don't worry. I'm just trying to make sure that I get a block down here. In terms of the building variety here, I'm using uh, a bunch of buildings from the Netherlands and specifically a, a lot of larger buildings from Amsterdam, uh, which uh, they might, like, I'm not sure. Uh, how iconic like the American Hotel is as a landmark in Amsterdam. Maybe it's a little bit too iconic. Uh, you can let me know in the comments. I have no idea, but I've placed that over on the left there. Uh, but I I'm placing a variety of different buildings here from Germany, from the Netherlands, from Belgium. Um, and they just generally fit a Dutch theme pretty well. One thing you'll notice is I go pretty light on the modern buildings that I place here. Even though there are some modern buildings in the center of Groningen, um, I don't want to place too many here because I want to maintain the historical character of this part of the city. And I, I know it might be realistic to place more than I, I place here, but I, you know, I, I want to preserve the history of this part of the city, and I feel like placing modern buildings probably detracts from that even though it might be realistic. Uh, I will be placing, obviously, lots of post-war stuff in other parts of the city, and we will have some modern buildings uh, for buildings that might have been torn down. Uh, maybe they were replaced with more modern buildings uh, just every once in a while in this core area, and obviously we'll have more and more as we move out of the core of the city. But uh, this is the core of the city. It's been here for a long time. I want to mostly stick to older buildings here. We do have one super modern building on this uh, on the other side actually of the of the market, um, not the side we were just working on there. But yeah, you can see I'm working with surfaces here. Basically, I'm placing down some uh, cobblestone surfaces, um, red on the periphery and gray in the center of the market area itself, just to add some variety. And I'm trying to add a little bit of like a, a gap in between them. Just there's like this little uh, gray area that uh, serves as a transition. So it's not just immediate between one type of brick and the other. I don't know, really small detail you might notice. In terms of roads, I'm using the network extensions, pedestrian path roads, the concrete ones. And I'm using those because I want to make sure that, I mean, when they uh, are next to a road that is not a pedestrian only road, I want to make sure that they've got the bollards um, that are automatically placed. So, so these are a really good option. They also have no parked cars and it just it's really easy for me to just ban cars completely from these. Um, and I've actually added invisible bike paths over them. Uh, I forget if I did that earlier in the episode or a little bit later, but point is there I put invisible bike paths over them so cyclists will use them. There will be pedestrians as well, but I'm also able to place buildings and um, the buildings are functional. And I'm trying to make sure that the buildings in this core area are residential buildings rather than commercial. Um, simply, and I'll, I'll place storefronts down and stuff, but just so that they don't need delivery trucks, because I obviously don't want delivery trucks here, but if I ban delivery trucks from coming here, the buildings will be unhappy and people won't like it. So uh, sticking to residential stuff, but in terms of the look of the buildings, it's it's going to be the same either way for the most part. Um, oh yeah, I'm also adding this like truck here with just some crates and stuff behind it. Only one, but obviously you've got to unload um, market uh, supplies in in some way so I am assuming that this is sort of how that's done uh, I might not be the most realistic trailer there it's like a container trailer but maybe I can replace that in the future that was just for now because I had those downloaded and I'm placing down some market workers because weirdly enough these markets don't have like the, the um the building versions don't have workers automatically placed down, which is the only bummer with those. Other than that, they're 
ridiculously detailed. I don't know what the reasoning behind that was, but there are no workers there, so I have to add them myself, uh, which took a little while, and I did most of it off camera, but you could see me sort of placing them down here. You could also see cyclists riding around here, because I placed... Um, obviously the invisible pedestrian paths, which also serve as cycle paths here going through here. There might, it might not seem like there are a lot of people here, but there will be in the future. Don't worry. It's just right now we don't have a very large population in the city. And I've placed this sort of, uh, I don't even know what this is. It's like a statue in the middle of the, the square here and place a, uh, Netherlands flag above it, which is pretty cool. But yeah, anyway, uh, it's about time that we hopped in game just to take a look at what we built here. But also, I want to show you the surroundings and just some changes that I'm thinking of making based on comments from the last episode. So uh, let's let's get to it. Let's hop in game. Okay, we're in game, and the vibes they are they are good, very good vibes here. We only have a couple problems with this area, um, and nothing's complete. Or actually, no, this is sort of complete over here. Sort of. Uh, the one thing I haven't added is bike parking and bikes. And I'm not exactly sure how to do that because I feel like placing parked bikes uh, outside here would be possibly unrealistic. I'm not exactly sure how this would be managed because I know the, the sheer quantity of people coming to this market would be you know, very, very large. So having outdoor bike parking might be unrealistic. Um, Dutch people, you guys are going to have to help me out with that one. I might try to do underground bike parking. And I think there's an asset for that. That I try... Yes, let's let's see what this looks like. I wanted to just take a look at this quickly. Uh, it looks like just a... Yeah, I, I don't know if this is what it looks like in the Netherlands. I've never really seen an underground bike parking area. The closest thing to this is like at train stations sometimes. There will be an outdoor bike parking or like bike lockers here in the United States. But uh, that's sort of what I was thinking there. And then maybe I'd have some bikes parked outside, possibly on um, racks to lock them on. Let me know in the comments what would be realistic, because I really don't know. And for now, that part of this area is going to be sort of incomplete, I guess. I've also placed some like prop lamps here. Not all of them are in a like perfect spots, but... For the most part, they're good, and the spacing's decent if you look at it at night. But, uh, I like it. The amount of- okay, sh let me just show you, if you're unfamiliar with these market props, and I guess the buildings that, um, are- come with the pre-made market stalls. Jez did such a good job on these props. Like, I, I really can't believe the level of detail here. It is spectacular, but it's also not so detailed that it'll absolutely decimate your frame rate. My frame rate's like 25, or you know, it's 20 right now or so, which is lower than I'd like it to be for this early in the city, but uh, I understand having placed so many props like this, it makes sense. There are also all these market workers that I placed here. They're selling cheese, baskets, um, we've got fish, we've got like antiques, lots of cool stuff being sold at uh, this market here. There's also this building sort of thing, the statue in it from France that is really cool. And I've got a Netherlands flag up there that's moving in the air and it's really cool. I also have Netherlands flags over, oops, over here. Although <laughs> they look like French flags. So I, I'm really not sure what to do here. I, I think, I mean, they look more like Netherlands flags from this side. Because they're, they're supposed to sort of be uh, on their side. But uh, we'll just, we'll leave that for now. Anyway, I, I really like these buildings. Most of them are pretty old. And this is very, very Dutch. And I love it. Really cool. Um, and then we have the American Hotel building here. Super awesome. Uh, model. I love it. But uh, we, we have one modern building over here in this entire square. And I'm fine with it being here. It's it's a, it's a really nice building, actually. I like it. 
I just don't want them all over the place because I want to maintain the older vibe of the area, even though it would be probably more realistic to have more modern buildings than I have. And there will be more, um, not just, just not directly right in the core of the city. One thing, uh, if you guys could give me some feedback on what to do with the garbage cans and also ignore the pavement here. It's sort of messed up, uh, from when I changed the roads around, um, if you could let me know what to do with the garbage cans, that'd be great because the mod I usually use for that, the pollution remover mod, um, wasn't working in Columbia City last time I tried it. Let me know if there's a, a good alternative for removing garbage or like removing the need for garbage as a service because I could just use like I'm using the no problem notifications mod right now for a bunch of different notifications, but um, I think there are problems here like beyond people aren't moving in and I think it's beyond just a lot of the problems that are being shown here. I think they probably want their garbage taken away. So let me know in the comments if there's a good alternative to that mod. Um, and yeah, once again, ignore the concrete and grass sort of glitches here. Also ignore like all of these different buildings over here that I've got placed. I actually really like this church and I'll probably keep it somewhere around here. But uh, this building from Berlin, uh, which if I do keep it, I'm obviously removing the text um, with props, but uh, it, it's it's a really cool building. I just don't know how realistic it is for this city. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Uh, this building over here could actually work over there in, in place of that building from Berlin. But yeah, that's sort of the, the core of the city, or at least the, the core core of the city with this market. Um, I, I love it. There's this indoor market, which we haven't detailed really, but... I'm going to extend the red um, brick around that. So that's sort of part of this this market area. And, and I want to place a church here, like an old church. And I had a good idea for what to do there. There was a really nice one that I found. So this one looks a little bit... It looks like a little bit much for a Dutch city. Okay, very, very north uh, and the Netherlands. Uh, I think I tried this one. That could really work. I, I like that one a lot. Um, let me know what you think of that. And let me know what you think of... I th where is it? It's somewhere here. Right here, I think. Yeah, this one. I also tried this one. I could... Uh, obviously, I'll use both of them somewhere within the city. But let me know what you think for the main church for the city over here. Yeah, I'll have it points. I'm not sure which direction I'll have it points uh, quite yet, but let me know out of those two what you like or if you have a, a different suggestion. But yeah, from up top here, you can see sort of how this looks in the context of the rest of the city core, which I'm actually going to make smaller. Um, I'm going to make the distance from one end uh, to another of the, of the city core here inside these canals a, a little bit smaller because right now it's about 1.6 kilometers from the farthest end actually it's probably more from like this let's measure this yeah that's even longer that should be way way smaller it's going to be more like this probably within these roads here uh, that is something more like that because that seems more realistic for a, a core like this because these these city cores were built around like actual moats and other fortifications that were you know not exactly this wide from my understanding so we'll make that smaller don't worry about that that's just uh, not quite right now I just want to work in the core of the city itself and probably a couple episodes from now we'll work on that uh, or I'll do I'll do that probably off camera I'm not exactly sure uh, I know Hronigans is about one kilometer in diameter, so we definitely do have to make that smaller. Uh, in terms of the the area that is where cars are banned, it's about around here is what I'm planning. So like say three to five blocks out from the um, the the core here with the market. Which, by the way, if you got a name suggestion for the market, uh, let me know in the comments probably probably prudent for Dutch people to be the one suggesting that or if you know Dutch you can uh, obviously suggest a name but uh you know a, a Dutch name for the market that makes sense here um or maybe we could just call it Vismarkt like the the market in uh in Kronigan because 
it is sort of just, you know, a fish market, extended fish market. There's, there's a lot of other stuff that's sold there other than fish, which I'm, pr I'm pretty sure this, the same is the case for the one at Kron again, because uh, a market of that size just selling fish would be, uh, that, that's a lot of fish. I don't, I don't think uh, the city can consume that much fish. Just a hunch though. Anyway, another thing I wanted to mention is the shapes of the, the farm plots. I know they're not the perfect shapes for, for the Netherlands at all. And obviously we need canals rolling through all, all around here. I will do that in the future. I also will make the, I, I know this map looks super flat, but it's actually way hillier than it should be, believe it or not, for the Netherlands. I'm, I'm going to completely flatten it out. It's going to be completely flat, basically. Uh, I have no reason to have any real hills at all, um, except man-made hills throughout the map. We'll flatten it to this level so that we can use network rivers in between the farms and make our own farm shapes in the future. That will be really cool. I'd like to do a lot of that in live streams in the future because it seems like pretty tedious to, to redo all these farms. But that that is something that is very low on my priority list. I know it's sort of important for the look of the city, but right now I'm just focused on the, the core of the city itself. That's what I'm going to be working on. But yeah, anyway, hopefully you all enjoyed the video. I sure did. It was a, it was a fun one. I, I've never really built a market like this. I guess my public market video for Columbia City recently was a little bit of a, a preparation for this, and I didn't even realize it. Anyway, though, hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss a, a new episode of the Netherlands. I, I swear I won't, I won't spam your uh, sub box. So that would be uh, maybe prudent to do, but at least, you know, leave a like and subscribe so YouTube knows to show you uh, new videos. I mean, I have notifications off for everything, like except my texts. Like I, I, I am, you know, hashtag reject modernity um, gang. So, um, <laughs> You know, I, I understand if you don't want to have notifications on, but just, you know, subscribing and liking is uh, a a good way to make sure you're keeping up with episodes. But if, if you want to follow me on Twitter, that would be probably a, a good idea. I post a lot of just random music stuff and just rants about just random maybe issues or like Andrew Yang posts something that's cringe all, all like <laughs> all, or good or whatever I like just random stuff like that you'll find over on my Twitter but then also updates on episodes if you want to support me you could head over to my patreon that's in the description uh, just give me a monthly donation if you if you'd like to if you don't totally fine uh, there's also an option in the description for a one-time donation if you, if you want or if you just want to watch the videos and leave your comments uh, and whatever that that is totally enough um, and the support in any form is highly appreciated but if you do want some perks um, there's one dollar a month you can get early access ad free to new videos once I finish them you can also get your name in the credits at the end of the video you can get uh, shout outs like quick shout out to Ben M Matthew Lewis Anthony Perez uh, Tommy Hines jr. and Dre Hammonds uh, thank you guys so much for your uh, your support, and just thank you to all patrons, all viewers generally for for your support. Um, but yeah, you can also get save games over on Patreon. So if you want to go explore the market, uh, you could go do that over there. That is that's an option if you'd like. Um, download the save game, explore all of these different market stalls, buy some. This is like dirty laundry. I don't know why you'd want to buy dirty laundry. There's probably something for you here. Maybe if you like cheese go and buy some cheese i don't know save games are are over on patreon but yeah that's basically it hopefully you enjoyed i sure did i i like this episode a lot the market will look more lively once we've got a higher population here we've only got like 50 people in the city right now because people don't want to move in for some reason but yeah hopefully you enjoyed that's about it i'll see you next time